Hi, my name is Jennifer, and this is my service dog, Buddy. He's a golden retriever, and he's two years old, and he looks way too serious right now. Buddy, come down. Come here. Get it. There are many different kinds of service dogs that do all sorts of different things for humans, but the thing that Buddy does for me is medical alert. So he's able to smell differences in my body chemistry, in my sweat or in my saliva, um, and he's able to alert me if I'm about to have a medical episode of some sort. I have two main problems that Buddy alerts me to. The first one is called chronic migraines. You may have heard of migraines before because they're very common and they're usually seen as a really um, bad headache, but they're actually much more than just a headache and mine are a little bit atypical. So I'll have symptoms like being unable to speak or my vision will go out or sometimes I can't move my body as well. My hands and my feet won't work. So of course it's very unsafe for me to be out in public if I start to have symptoms like that. So Buddy will lick me right on my nose to let me know many hours in advance that I'm going to be having a big migraine episode and that helps me prepare for it. I can be at home, I can shower, I can make sure that I've eaten or I've cooked or I've cleaned up my room and, and not worry about a migraine sneaking up on me. So I can ask Buddy to check me to see if he says that I'm getting a migraine today. Hey Buddy, check. Nope, so that means I'm not getting a migraine right now. But that could change anytime. So he will let me know and we will continue to talk to each other about that. The second medical alert that Buddy does for me is related to partial seizures. A seizure is when you have unusual brain activity that sort of makes everything shut down just for a few minutes. I only have partial seizures, so for me, I'll lose a little bit of consciousness, sort of be a little bit confused and sleepy, and also my body will start to shake. And if that happens, of course, it's very unsafe for me to be standing because I could fall down. I could either hit my head, I could hit somebody who's next to me, I could knock things over. Um, very dangerous for everybody around if, if somebody faints. So what Buddy does is he will lick my hand. He's next to me at all times and he will lick my hand if he senses that some kind of partial seizure is going to come on. And that tells me that I urgently need to make sure that I have a place to sit down. Oh, good boy. Good boy, good check. Thank you. So this is an example of an alert that Buddy does. And what he did was he started licking me because I was about to start shaking. This is a very minor one because I'm still talking but if I had been in a store and something like this happens to me, it's very unsafe for me if I hadn't already been sitting down. Once the event is happening, Buddy's job switches over to medical response. And what that means is he's responding to the symptoms that I'm having. So a couple of things he does for that, for example, is he'll lick my face so that I'll become conscious again more quickly after a seizure. Or he'll sit on my legs so that the blood will come back up to my heart and that will help me feel more awake again. Service dogs are important because they do things for humans that our inventions just can't do yet. There isn't anything at the store or at the doctor that I could buy that could warn me that I'm about to have a migraine or a seizure. It just doesn't exist. Dogs are the only way that we can do this. And if I didn't have Buddy, then I would always have to have an adult with me. Because service dogs are so important to disabled people like me, the Americans with Disabilities Act, or ADA, allows specially trained dogs like Buddy to go into most public places. You may have even seen a service dog team before. Most service dogs in public will be wearing a vest, but they don't have to be. And when they're wearing their vest or when they're working, we call that on duty. That just means that the dog is on their best behavior. Whenever we're at home, Buddy is considered off duty. And that means that he's just like any normal pet. We play fetch, we play tug of war, he's goofy, he gets to run around in the grass. Everything is normal. The only difference is that he'll hang out with me more because that way, if an event happens, he can still alert me. So even off-duty service dogs will do their job. It just means that they don't have to follow the strict rules that they have to follow at the store. Oh, getting a migraine. If you see a service dog team in a store, it is very tempting to want to go say hello. They are so cute and they are so fluffy but it's very important that you leave the team alone, especially if the dog is wearing a vest. Service dogs need to be super trained in order to behave as well as they do in public. 
but even the most well-trained dogs are not robots. They still have good and bad days, just like us, and they make mistakes. And sometimes they can be very, very easily distracted if a stranger comes up to try to greet them. <laughs> he wants to investigate. Remember, the handler is trying to manage their disability at the same time as they're managing their dog. Can you imagine taking a dog for a walk when you feel really sick? It's not fun to do, but that's what I have to do every day. And a lot of people who have service dogs don't look sick, like me. I look perfectly healthy, but I am sick, and at any moment I could become way more sick. It's important for my safety that Buddy and I are able to go to the store together and keep both of our attention on each other. That makes it so he can effectively communicate with me, I don't miss anything, and together we're able to manage my disability. And that's all I have for you today. I hope you had fun learning about Buddy and the amazing work that he does for me. And thank you very much for taking excellent care of Mr. Pistachio Krabs. <laughs>